And uh, the wingspan, probably 10 inches. There it is. There it is. Right there. There's my rod. Isn't she a beauty? And bang, bang, it's gone. Is it possible that this was simply a bird or insect? After seeing the evidence up close, the Fosters don't think so. I think they might be an undiscovered species that I've never really seen before. We are ready to help in any research that needs to be done and to find out what the answers are. They're obviously here. But not all rod sightings are captured on home video. One of the best images ever shot appeared in this feature film. Called The Night Marchers. It was produced in Hawaii by twin brothers Blake and Brent Cousins. I'm the man behind the camera. I do all the directing. Blake's been a guy in front of the camera. We work really well together as twin brothers and uh, get a lot accomplished. Popular throughout the Hawaiian Islands, the movie is about a documentary crew searching for a local legend. This is the entrance to the cave. Okay, let's go. We'll go let's do it. Deadly ghosts, known as the Night Marchers. They got it surrounded. The Night Marchers are basically Hawaiian warriors that are protecting their villages. Wow. There have been hundreds of Night Marcher sightings. While filming the movie's climactic let's scene go. in a cave, the brothers shot something that wasn't in the script. And uh, after viewing the footage and everything looked fine, we noticed that these uh, little flying, flying insects were flying at amazing speed. But they didn't look like any insects they'd seen before. What we did is show it to uh, some of our friends in the neighborhood, and each and every friend of ours had an overwhelming response like, that's no bug. The brothers quickly scoured the rest of their footage only to find more of these unexplained creatures. And we're saying, wow, but we actually got a good array of these things. Brent and Blake have returned to the cave numerous times, but have yet to capture more rods on tape. But they are still believers. To actually capture a phenomenon known as uh, rods, it really is something. Something they'll continue to search for the next time their cameras roll. Jose Escamilla's Rod's website created a sensation, and documented evidence began pouring in. That's when I really started getting footage from a lot of different places, from all over the world, basically. And the more Jose watched the tapes, the more he wondered. Maybe it's the Rod's that are watching us. How do you know that these things are not benevolent? I mean... We don't. We don't know their nature. Ignition. Lift off. Cape Canaveral, Florida. Houston's now patrolling. The space shuttle Columbia blasts off. Columbia roll program. The booster rockets separate from the main craft. As the shuttle reaches maximum speed, the camera captures an unidentified flying object. Watch again as the image appears then vanishes in the blink of an eye. Altitude now 222,000 feet, downrange 48 nautical miles. Could this UFO have been trying to learn something by flying so close to our space shuttle? It seems unimaginable. But what if rods are alien beings with an unknown purpose? It's very hard to verbalize and explain what their purpose is, and I'm not at all sure what the purpose is. If the rods have been made by the aliens, then I'd say that the UFO reality is trying to challenge the way we're using our science in destructive ways. And uh, whether or not these little rods uh, are just a way of mocking us and saying, look, you know, we can fly around in your culture and do things that you have no idea what it's about. I believe that this Rod's entity has been studied on a much higher level of what's been shared with the American media and public. Is there any indication that our government knows about Rod's? In a memo 1950, it was stated that 
Flying saucers are the most classified subject in the United States, even more so than the H-bomb. It's clear that the government's been lying through its teeth, and for many, many years. I find it extremely hard to believe that our government does not know about these life forms. With all the footage and military testing, their silence has been deafening. And like other reported alien activity, some wonder if the government knows a lot more than it's telling. We've had people who work for the Navy who have told us that they know what rods are. If the United States government knows about the rods and they're trying to figure out, I wonder how much money they're spending, I wonder how many top secret documents they've generated already chasing these things around, you know? And if I were in the position of the aliens, I'd be laughing my head off uh, at the CIA trying to figure this out. Conspiracy theorists use this footage to make their point was shot by NASA hundreds of miles above the Earth's surface. Look at these streaking shapes. Rod's researchers claim that they're not comets and not asteroids. So what are they? There has been sightings of uh, something uh, in outer space uh, that seems to be similar to what we see as the Rod phenomena uh, in the air. Since no known animal can survive in the airless vacuum of space, could this be proof that rods are actually UFOs? The problem with this is a lot of times people are thrown off by the word UFO. Automatically they're thinking flying saucers, spacemen, and all this other kind of stuff. When quite literally the term is unidentified flying object. Keep in mind that these astounding images were taken with the government's own cameras. Does this mean there's more to the rods mystery than meets the eye? So you assume that within the government there's some branch that, that better damn well be busy looking into these things. Now that Jose Escamilla has logged hundreds of rod sightings through his website, all eyes turn to the scientific community. With clear pictures now available, will scientists finally take rod seriously? Skeptics such as entomologist Douglas Yanega insists that rods are actually insects or birds flying so fast that their images become blurred on tape. I think we've got enough scientific knowledge about what insects look like when they're captured on film that we can rule rods out as being anything other than that. But Jose refutes this charge. It's an insect, real close to the lens, when you go frame by frame, you will see exactly what it is. It's an insect. If it's a bird, same thing. If it's a rod, it's a rod. Others claim that these fleeting images are lens flares, optical illusions caused by sunlight. But how could lens flares move with such lifelike precision? My impression was that there were enough checks on different kinds and styles of video cameras and variations in the shutter speeds and stuff like that that I don't think that's a very good argument. A final accusation is that rods are the result of defects within the videotape itself. I don't like the notion of an artifact on the videotape, but there's too much of it, too many places, too many people uh, for that to be the case. Dr. Bruce McAbee is a physicist who works for the United States government. He's also been investigating footage taken of UFOs since the 1960s. I've analyzed all sorts of video things and determined sometimes I can explain them clearly, sometimes I can't. Putting his expertise to the test, we submitted the video taken at the Cave of the Swallows. The clearest images of rods ever caught on tape. In this case here with rods, it appears that there are some images that uh, are unexplainable. Dr. McAbee spent hours carefully studying the footage, trying to determine if rods are living creatures. On the one hand, you say to yourself, it's hard for me to believe that there are objects zipping through the sky willy-nilly at such high speeds that we can't see them. On the other hand, the camera's clearly picking up something. By using computer enhancement and making meticulous calculations, Dr. McAbee searches for clues that might lead to a clearer understanding of this phenomenon. If this object were 10 feet from the camera, it would be about 7 tenths of a foot long. 
for 100 feet from a camera, it would be seven feet long. Now, are there seven foot long objects flying around? So if 